Hello and welcome back to the Intellect series of 7 Days to Die. Today, I want to do something a little bit different from just grinding tier 6s. I want to get myself a 4x4 today. So, to do that, I'm going to need the 4x4 truck accessories, and I highly doubt I have enough steel on hand, but I have some. Let's see, this can make me 18.9 as a starting point. Let me also just smell in the rest of that. Any others got any iron in them at all? They do not, but they have a good amount of clay, so I can probably turn that on and turn that on, and that should make me enough forged steel relatively quickly to get the 4x4 truck chassis. I don't think I need anything else. Have I got the mechanical parts? Yeah, I think I have everything else for the 4x4. Now, you'll notice in my inventory, I have five treasure maps, and that's because I have been holding on to them from the various sources you get them from, uh, just because I want to do them all at once in the wasteland, and now that I'm going to be going into the wasteland, it seems like as good a time as any to do that, but I'm going to take all these mods, and all this armor and weapons, and I'm going to put it in the box I have outside the trader, because I have just so much stuff from doing these tier 6 infestations, they give you so much, it is insane. Very little of it is any use to you, but they give you it. And that isn't even my main stash of money, I don't think. I think the 100k dukes is still sitting outside the trader. I just haven't been able to really spend it. Let me grab all these. I'll keep one level 6 SMG just in case I want to use one. A spare M60. Thumb batons. I'll keep that steel helmet in case I want to use it, like I said earlier. Auger. Backup impact drivers. Bunch of spare nail guns. I'll keep the level 1 nail gun and use that one. And I'll sell these level 6s, preferably with mods on them. Right. And a level 5 chainsaw. And a level 5 baton. I need more repair kits again. Let's see here. Let me make like 50 duct tape and grab some forged iron and I'll turn all of that into repair kits and it should do me for the rest of the playthrough at least. Let's head over to the trader really quickly. So over here, I have another 60k dukes and I have another 4 treasure maps. Damn, I didn't even know that. Uh, so... My total amount of dukes is what exactly? Hang on. Oh hey, there's some forged steel in here. Like that. Then I have all of this as well. Uh, I don't want to sell the auto shotgun. I might want to use that at some point, so I'll hold on to it. I need to start filling the second container with mods and items as well. And then this has even more money in it. Oh my god. I haven't even been doing that much questing, have I? Since the last time I did all this kind of thing? I don't think I have. How many dukes do I have? 16... 160,000! I don't even know how I got that. But here we are. But I am not done there. I have all these treasure maps, and the one decent thing you seem to get from treasure maps is money. So that would make a lot of sense to get onto that. So I'm gonna drive out to... the wasteland. Go right to Trader Bob, actually. Get right in the middle of his town. In fact, I'll fly out to the wasteland. Why would I... Why would I do it like that? Where's my gyrocopter? Yeah, I'll head out to Trader Bob, and then I'll read all those treasure maps, or read as many of them as I can. You will have to clear the other quests before you can read the map again. And that should give me the best level loot I can get from the treasure maps. They're not that good, but I do want to try and get a ridiculous amount of money just for the humour of it, I guess. I mean, I have nothing much better to do while I wait for that steel to craft. So I'll do all those treasure maps, and then I'll see what I can do for Trader Bob in terms of quests. Right, so I'm pretty deep into the wasteland here. There's a chance we might still end up with some treasure maps in the desert, but it's fine. Most of the loot in treasure maps isn't really leveled anyway, but if I'm going to be wasting my time on treasure maps, which really only gets you a little bit of ammo and some money, uh, and the whole point of this is literally wasting time whilst just kind of experimenting with a ridiculous amount of treasure maps I have, uh, so I will read all the treasure maps I basically can in the middle of the desert here. In the wasteland, sorry. Clear the landing strip here. Ah, oh, there's just two zombie bears right in front of me. Three zombie bears right in front of me. Welcome to the wasteland. Right, so I think you can only read um, one of everybody's treasure map at a time. Like, I've got two of Raphael's here. So I don't think I can read a second Raphael map until I clear the other map. I can get a good few of them. Right, so... Where's the nearest one? 500 meters, Claude's treasure map. Where did they all spawn? They all look like they're in the wasteland to me. Uh, the logical choice would be to go in a bit of a circle, so let's start with that one. I'm gonna pick up my gyrocopter. I don't trust them. Ow. Fortunately, when you're on a vehicle, it seems to reduce the damage you take. Oh. From uh, hits like that, assuming you get lucky and it doesn't just make you bleed or have an instant concussion. 
It's very inconsistent. I don't know why they do that. Like, you'll take reduced damage, but also you have, like, a 90% chance of taking an injury. What's the point of those two mechanics? They seem to contradict each other. But here we are. Ah, right, here we are. This one's in a road, which is slightly annoying, but it's fine. Load my turrets. It's one facing that way. And, I don't know, one facing that way. Right, where's my shovel? Although you start with a... Hang on. As I was saying, you start with a layer of stone anyway, so let me dig this up and then we'll see what we get inside. Here's the first cache though. I've only got six lockpicks, so I'm gonna have to pickaxe through a lot of these. But that's fine, I have four ranks of minor 69er, I should be good. So first one, just some weapon mods, a little bit of ammo, not even any money, just 600 dukes worth of gold. Disappointing, but that's why we got fucking nine of the things. So let's drive up there. Right, here's another treasure map. I'll build myself a little ramp into the center of this and go from there. And some more money worth like a thousand dukes, a mod and some decent ammo. I'll say no to like a magazine for my M60, but it's a long walk to get to it. Oh, here we are. Uh, a little bit more ammo, some parts some technically money. I'll probably scrap most of the money into paper, because paper is more useful to me than dukes. Because I can get brass from anything, but paper is a little bit more difficult to find. Uh, let's see, is there a town nearby? Yeah, I'll head into that town and get some water before I go and do those other maps. There, that should cover me for a while. Ah, uh, some silver. Still absolutely basically nothing for the amount of effort it takes to come out here and get them. Yeah, 44 Magnum and 10k Dukes, that's somewhat decent. At least this will get me a better discount, assuming I have that book, which I think I do. Let me see. Um, yeah, so I'll be able to get a discount with the Magnum, at least that's something. And 10k Dukes isn't bad, but I did have to search how many maps to actually get that. It's a good thing I made all those extra repair kits, because I have been using them in here, let me tell you. Let's see. That is the maximum range I can do? Yeah, I don't think I'm getting into the wasteland from there. Okay, we'll just search it in the forest then. Who's sun batons? Okay, weird, but whatever. I mean, I'm getting a decent amount of ammo crafting supplies, but... Versus just actually mining those things for 10 minutes, this is not very profitable. Oh, here it is. Like, directly under where I was digging. And a little five steel spear. I mean, that could have been good if I had been playing the spear build. But even then, level five. I would have definitely had a level five steel spear by day 29 anyway, and I would have been too low of a loot stage to get a level five steel steel spear much earlier than this, which is the problem with uh, treasure maps. Largely, they're too niche to be useful early on, and loot stage governs your things you find in loot, which means that you're going to be denied from getting anything good from them anyway in terms of like leveled loot, like a level 5 steel spear there. And by the time you're high enough level, or you're at the stage of the game where the things in a treasure map are useful, Treasure maps are the most inefficient way to get anything inside of them. If you want ammo, infested clears. The stuff you get inside of a treasure chest here is like the same stuff you get from a level 2 infested clear cache. It is seriously mid loot. And if you want ammo crafting supplies, it is always going to be faster to just mine lead or mine coal and nitrate. Especially since you're going to have to be doing some kind of digging to get to these anyway. You might as well dig the materials you actually want. And as for dukes, doing anything would be a much faster way of getting dukes than doing this. A few diamonds isn't bad, but again, it's just a bunch of ammo I can't use. Especially since it's random ammo. Ow. Did that just disappear? Or did it go onto the surface? Hang on. I mean, I don't honestly care all that much. Why does... Why does the treasure loot completely vanish out of the fabric of reality when you do that? that? As if these couldn't be worse. That can happen. I mean, I'm not really missing much of it, but, you know. I'm assuming the bag dropped through the world or something. Ugh, whatever. Anyway, as I was saying, 
you get a bunch of assorted random ammos if you just spent the same amount of time actually making the ammo you need. You would get so much more. I do not understand people's obsession with these things. They are the least efficient way to get anything you can get from them, so why do people bother with them? But part of what my content is about is being informative, so I need to show you why they're shit. I can't just keep saying, oh well they're shit, and then I just get 100 comments asking me why they're shit. And then I do a video like this in every series, and I still get the same comments. And the same level 4 pump shotgun I got last time. Decent, but I have a level 6 auto shotgun already. I mean, it's in my pockets right now. So it definitely doesn't compete with the trader rewards you could have spent that time getting. And yeah, 11 treasure maps, although let's call it 10. Um, because one of them did disappear on me. That's kind of what I've got to show for it. Most of the stuff in there, I probably got a lot of extra 762 actually. I wasn't really keeping track of that. Oh yeah, and the bullet tips. Uh, let's see, the leather wasn't a part of it there. So there's what I got from like 10 treasure maps. It took me an entire day of deliberately going the most efficient route, basically. Aside from maybe taking the gyrocopter, but that's a lot of landing. Now there's two conclusions we can draw from that. Either the people who tell me that treasure maps are amazing are either really lucky, or they're really bad at the game and don't know how to get those things much more efficiently than doing that. 1000 bullet tips per day is not an efficient yield. That is terrible. And that's assuming you have 10 treasure maps lying around, which most players won't. In fact, the easiest way to get treasure maps is going to be doing like tier 4 and 5 and 6 PYs, which will give you much more of the things you're getting from these treasure chests than the treasure chests would. Much quicker and much more interestingly. That was really boring. Let's see, another 280 forged steel from you, 300 from you, 300 and a bit from you, and I think I only loaded three of them up, so that's pretty good. It gives me a total of what? 192 forged steel. Still need a bit more for the um, 4x4, but it'll be here in no time, basically. I'm going to take all this stuff over to the trader box. Not that I can get rid of it right now, but I can start combining all the stuff I want to sell and start making actual money in an actually efficient way to do it, you know? Rather than like 15k jukes a day with treasure maps. Hello there. Yeah, skill point, nice. Can I get a uh, run and gun three? Nice, now I can reload and run at full speed, which comes up a lot with my playstyle. Right, hey, so. You better not bring any sugar butts for 10%. Awesome sauce for 20%, wearing a cigar for a further 10%. I don't bother with better barter, it's a lot of skill points for not that much. The M60 will now go for 6.2k. I'm just going to sell all of this. Oh, he won't buy any more stun batons. <laughs> Probably should have sold the more expensive ones first, but that's fine. Right, so I got 77,000 dukes from that. That definitely dwarfs the amount of money I made from doing the treasure maps. And then I'm also going to sell all this extra military armor just to clear out the inventory and be done with it. And I'll hold on to those stun batons until I can actually sell them back to him. I got half a level from that so far. Here we go, an additional 5k. Right, so, how much fucking money do I have? Okay, so just a clean quarter million. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, okay. Should really buy more from his vending machine, shouldn't I? If I have a quarter of a million dukes. <laughs> there. Spent like 10k jukes, didn't even notice. He has no tier 5 infestations. Alright. Let's do a tier 4 infestation then. They're also really good. I'll go put this extra stuff back at my base and then we'll go and do it couple of tier 4 infested and see we get like the same amount of ammo as doing treasure maps but it's way more enjoyable and you get way more xp for it. Right, how's the steel coming? Extremely well, that is enough steel, right. Let's get this 4x4 going and I'll let it craft while I do this other mission. Oh, it only takes two minutes? I'll probably just wait then. Um, 60 mechanical parts, a bunch of leather, uh, electrical parts, and duct tape. I don't think I have any crafted, but I can get some. And then for the 4x4 accessories, you need pipes, springs, more mechanical parts, and headlights. Headlights, pipes, springs. I don't think I have enough actual mechanical parts. Let's see, 4x4 truck accessories. And then for the chassis, I need more. I need another, what's that, 16? Where's my actual impact driver? There it is. 
Another 16 mechanical parts. I can do that very quickly. Give me a moment. I just need to find a couple of cars. Oh, I can scrap that engine for some. There we go, that'll do. I probably had an engine I could have scrapped as well. There we go. That's enough mechanical parts to make the chassis. Oh, do I need to go out and get an engine, actually? I might need to. Just to actually be able to make the proper truck itself. See, I've got a battery there. Yeah, I actually will need an engine. Have I got spare power in here? Can I steal that? Uh, 4 by 4 truck chassis. Uh, what else will I need for the 4 by 4 4 wheels, of course. Ah, here they are. Right, while I wait for those to craft, I also need to head over to my do collectors and gather up some water. There we go. I have some spare water in here. Oh, there's some spare glue in here as well. That's good. And 36 more. Cool. Accessories are done. They'll take another 50 seconds. I'll just wait so I can queue it up at least. I should also grab the fuel saver mod from my gyrocopter because it's really not going to need it. But the 4x4 definitely could do with a fuel saver. Right then. While that crafts, I'll put this gas in here just so don't lose it. I will simply run to this quest because it is, what, 200 meters away? Yeah, I'll just run there. <laughs> in fact, have I got some Mega Crush? I do. Uh, while I'm here, have I got some... There we go, time charges. My preferred way of opening locked containers that is kind of dangerous to do in the wasteland. Alright, let's clear this out. Come on, get down here. Ow. There's nothing like one hitting a radiated zombie with the stun baton. Because of that 10% chance to insta kill. Here we go, a bunch of ammo. And some more ammo and another set of explosives. Which I can use to open more containers. Great. Uh, is there still more zombies in here? Oh yeah, there's the ones that are in the little area. I also forgot the ones that drop in over here. There we go. Let's run back to Trader Wrecked. Ow. Ooh, a level 6 compound bow. That's actually good. I can't pick anything up though. <laughs> I'll take that and I will take the ratchet, I guess. Let me just sell that immediately back to him just to get it out of the way. Oh, yeah. Six compound bow. I'll find another. Oh, well, there's a mod for it. That works. And I'll just sell him my old one. Uh, take Let's that. Make it back. Post office. Let me go grab the truck first. There we go. Grab all that. Right, let's head out and do this tier four infested as well then. Not even in the building in the aggro on to me. Oh, that's a lot of zombies. Another level 6 iron travel. I'm just getting those thrown at me. Now let's treat that abrasion. I don't have any antibiotics on me, but it's fine. There we go. That only took a couple of minutes. Right, let's loot this. There we go. Ah, oh, there we go. And another beaker, of course. Now that I don't need them, I find them everywhere. Magnum Enforcer, some armor, and some acid. Of course, mods. Let's head back to Trader Wrecked and get a reward. I will take the customized fittings and this tactical assault rifle, which I can sell him later. Um, I don't want to do normal tier 5s. They kind of suck. <laughs> Maybe I should do some mining then. 
And tomorrow we can see what POYZ has. Let's see, can I put those customized fittings on anything? No, nope, I actually didn't need the customized fittings. All of my armor has it, which is unusual for me. Right, well, I'll spend the rest of the day gathering materials then, because that's what I really need more than anything. Ammo's nice, but building materials are nicer. Here we go. I still can't make the expanded tank mod. I should really just go quickly check Wrecked and see if he's selling one. Maybe I should check all the traders. Take all my money out. Do a big run at the traders. Try and buy expanded tanks for my various tools and buy all their vending machine contents because that'll be kind of funny. But let me drive around to Wrecked first. The iron mining can wait. That can be done at any time of day. Yep, no mods that I need anyway. Let's go see some other traders then. Hello, Bob. A motor tool large tank mod. I will take that. Did I buy any sugar butts there? No, I'll just use the uh, 44 Magnum discount plus my cigar then. Otherwise, nothing else I need. See, I don't actually need an ergonomic grip on my auger. I don't know why you can even put it on there. But it is good for boosting the damage a little bit. So let's go see another trader and see if we can get another tank mod or some vehicle mods would be really nice. Ah, another motor tool tank mod. I'll take that. I really would have preferred the um, schematic for it, but... That also works. I mean, I only really need two anyway. I mean, you only really need one. It's not like you can use the auger and the chainsaw at the same time, but I would have liked the schematic. Spending a lot of my money, but I'm getting a lot of very useful things, like all these drinks. Oh, so many learning elixirs. Nice. The small motor tool tank mod schematic. I mean, it's something, but I probably won't waste my time with it. Still no vehicle mods, but I have plenty of time today. Who else is around? Trader Joel? And I also know a Trader Jen down in the snow biome, and another Trader Hugh there, and another Trader Joel. I'll just keep making the rounds to them until I run out of time. Trader Joel here doesn't have much of any value to me, but I can always raid his vending machines. He's probably going to be the last trader I have time to talk to today, which is fine. There we go. And I've raided his vending machine. So I'm going to fly back to my base. And tonight is going to be all about mining some iron. Because I'm going to need some forged steel for the late game. And I have a little bit crafted. But you're going to need more than a couple of hundred for the rest of the playthrough. So I'm going to head over to my base. Plate out my inventory full of snacks. And see what we can do with iron. Okay, so my forges have produced a little bit more forged steel. A good amount, but nothing crazy. I am going to collect. You know what? I'm going to collect 14,000 iron, which should be enough to fill both of these forges slots with iron. I will, of course, need to repopulate it with clay after it's done cooking all that, but I'll need some more coal as well. So I think, let me see, did I get any rock busters today? I got a couple. And did I get coffee? I got some. I am going to head out to... Hmm. I'm going to head out here and mine some iron and then mine some coal. I'm going to try and get 14,000 iron and a couple of stacks of coal. The reason I'm going kind of far away is so that this area despawns and I don't have to worry about screamers destroying my base. In fact, that lead mine I had actually did have a decent amount of iron in it, so I'll go there instead. It's nice and further away as well. Here we are. You up. Three coffees, because they can stack as high as three, get the extra ore, and I am going to start mining this iron. Oh yeah, I said 14,000 iron, I don't know why I said that. I mean 14 stacks of iron, which would be 84,000 iron. Yeah, that seems a bit more reasonable to my usual demands. Let's get started on that. So, there is 84,000 iron, just in time for a screamer to actually scream. All the other ones my turret's killed. Okay, so, as I was saying, 84,000 iron, pretty easy to do, because you get twice as much of it compared to everything else, so it really does come a lot easier than the other materials. But I still have to get some coal. My rockbusters have ran out. Is there some coal nearby? There's one. Uh, here's a good time to test if I can one-shot the coal. I can. That is probably going to be much faster to do with the pickaxe then. Than my previous testing. Let me get like a stack of coal and I'll be back. There we go. Let's head back to my base. So each of my forges has two stacks of iron smelting with like a thousand coal to fuel it. So I shouldn't have to bother powering it. It's very inefficient to do it that way. But it does mean I just don't have to really attend to it. 
Once that's all smelted in, I will add a bunch more clay, which can wait for now. So I'm going to get back on the questing because it's a good way of getting XP and uh, and it's reasonably fun. Let's go talk to Trader Wrecked, see if he has any good tier 5 infestations. And be sure to buy all of his stuff. Here we go, two tier 5, four tier 5 invested clears. Uh, let's do the closest one, the Navisgain High School. So one thing I like to do with the Navisgain High School is actually get the end loot first. Because it's really quite easy to get to. If we just break down a couple of pretty weak walls here. Break this one. We can open up the door. And let's test my new bow. Not bad. Let's get a look at this loot. Uh, auto turret bundle. Yep, that's going to get you a bunch more 9 mil. I do need a bunch of auto turrets, and this is way easier than actually crafting them. So, tier 5 infestations for the win. Trapping, food, the bandolier, and some ammo. Right, let's go clear the actual PY then. Another vending machine. And we're clear. Okay, let's go get my reward for this then. You did the job. Well, that all sucks. Let's take the next infested clear for bags. Tell those back to him. Oh yeah, it's this one. Put the turrets in a position where they're going to cover me for most of it. Well, he's radiated. Interesting. Well, that's very effective. Did not mean to fire that so early, but no harm done. Did I one-hit kill that radiated zombie? Drag this cop over. Or I won't, because I don't need to. Right, the trench is clear. Let's start clearing these buildings. Hang on. Well, I don't see any survivors. These need a reload. Right, I know this next room is pretty much impossible to sneak into. Hang on, I think there's zombies up here as well. Anyway, as I was saying. I think it's pretty much impossible to sneak into this room without some serious investment into stealth, but I'll try. It's a good start. Oh, they didn't immediately get set on me, that's something. Yeah, that one kill is what I got, and I'm pretty sure it was just a crawler. Who's still alive in there? There we go. Pretty easy clear, all things considered. Grab my turrets. Let's go get the loot. Play trap bundle. Bunch of stuff. Right, let's go get a reward from Rex and see if I can take another tier 5 infestation today. I'll have a 6 robotic drone. And a time and a nail. Oh, time charges actually. I'm not going to use the robotic drone because the last time I did it bugged out and killed me. But if I find any robotic drone mods on my way around, I could sell that. So I'll take it. And I'll take port bags again or town hall. I'll take the town hall. Here we are. Let's step inside. 
Yeah, two skill points, nice. Uh, let's just go for agility eight so I can get the final rank of parkour. Ow. Damn it, thought I had enough room to dodge that. Job turrets. Oh, that was a lot sooner than I expected to see some zombies. jump into the room and jump back out the room. Who's still alive? Hi there. Yep, that PY was a breeze. Most of them are with the turrets, but that was a real breeze. Uh, security camera bundle. Those are the worst. At least you can scrap them for iron. Alright, I'm gonna drive home. I can't get another quest from Wrecked, but I am filled with loot. I mean, if I sprain my leg doing this, it doesn't really matter, because I can insta-heal it. That's a lot of loot. Certainly more than the treasure maps gave me for a day's work. So I'm going to drive home, and we'll see how much of that iron has smelted up. Probably not enough of it to do much yet, but it'll be good to see what kind of rates we're looking at. Right, all of that is done. Let's see how the forges are doing. So they've smelted in about three quarters of their iron. Now obviously most of them are going to have no clay, so I'm going to wait for that iron to smelt in, which will take, if it's one second per iron, then it'll take 1,340 seconds, which is uh, about 22 minutes. So probably in the morning they'll be ready to start taking on some clay. Uh, in fact, it might be smart to split these up back into this, and it'll take twice as long, but I can start putting the clay in immediately. Uh, let's see, raw materials, bunch of clay. That is about 2,000 clay per, which is fine. The thing about clay is it's actually worth about 5 clay per clay you put in the forge. So you'll get a decent amount of clay out of just 2,000 in each of them. Yeah, that should do. But it does take 5 times as long for clay to smelt as well. Still, in about 20 minutes we can start spitting out a lot of forged steel. This one can already start, actually. Um, this one had 6,000 clay left over, so there's 400 clay, uh, steel. This one has them as well, there's another 400 odd, another 400 and a bit, another 500, another 300, and these are, oh no, this one has some 300, and this one is completely out of clay. So there's a good couple thousand, uh, steel coming from that. There's one last thing I want to do, which is make a lantern, because I was using electronic lights before but they were taking up too much power i could put them back and i got a bunch more engines but why not just use the free power source now that i think about it so forged iron where do you live i might have no forged iron right, well in that case i'll have one of these produce me an unholy amount of forged iron that's fine there now headlights they're in scrap one two three four uh electrical parts duct tape I might need one more duct tape. Where's all my cloth gone? It does go on adventures, it sometimes ends up in there. Make another duct tape, and then oil. Right, and then give me four lanterns. One, two, three, four. Right, so my four lanterns are done. Let's place those on the ceiling. Uh, what colour do I want them to be? 
doesn't change the light color as far as I'm aware. It just changes the actual, yeah, the, the plasticky bit. Jeez, these are brighter than any of the normal lights. Ugh. My eyes. Well, at least we can definitely fucking see in here. Right, well, that is going to have to do it for today's episode. I got a lot done in terms of I'm mostly gathering ammo between the treasure chests and the um, tier 5 infestations. I have so much ammo. And the thing is as well, the turrets upstairs, each of them hasn't used any more than like 200 ammo. And I've had them up there for like a week. So that is pretty good amounts. But yeah, that's going to do it for today. Thank you to my channel members and patrons for making this video possible. And thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.